financial institutions can save millions using credit risk prediction. In this video, you will see a demo on how to use machine learning for credit risk prediction. The demo is available on our platform experiencedatascience.com, you can also try it out. The demo is available on the channel's website experiencedatascience.com. If you do not see it on first page, you can go to see all experiences and then select finance. The demo scenario is predicting risk for consumer loans. Here you see two related datasets. Let me copy it and make it ready to use. The train dataset will be used to train the machine learning model and score will be used to make the prediction. Let us first analyze the train dataset by displaying the data. I will select few sample records to display. The data has information about the person who has taken the loan, the kind of assets, profession, the loan amount. Default a flag is equal to 1 if the loan has not been repaid. Now let us use a histogram to see the distribution between defaulters and non-defaulters. There is very high proportion of records with default flag equal to 0, which means that non-defaulters are higher compared to defaulters. Now let us analyze the financial loss using a bar plot. I will select default status as X, and loan amount as Y. I will set up some other parameters and let me now run. We can observe that total loan amount is around 5 billion, and default amount is 770 million. This represents a loss of 15% for the financial institution who has given the credit. Now let us see how we can use machine learning to prevent this loss. One of the first step in machine learning is to do an univariate analysis. Let us start with analyzing the non-numerical or in other words the categorical features. I will select all categorical columns and we will analyze it against the target variable defaulter status. Let me run and in a while, I get the results. For each categorical variable, there are two bars, one corresponding to defaulter status yes and another corresponding to defaulter status no. Let us take example of house ownership. We can observe that the proportion of people having rented house is more in defaulters compared to non-defaulters. This would mean that having a rented house increases the credit risk. You will also observe that there are many cities in the datasets. This information will be important while configuring the machine learning model. We can also make similar analysis for numerical variables. In our dataset, we have various numerical variables such as income, age, experience and few others. Let us see which variables can impact the credit risk. Visual shows two box plots for each numerical variable. Top box plot is for defaulters and bottom box plot is for non-defaulters. You can observe that having less experience can increase the credit risk. Similarly we can also observe that the levels of income do not impact credit risk as both box plots are more or less of same length. Now let us build a machine learning model. I will be using XGBoost algorithm. The input to the algorithm is all features available in the data related to demographics, income, ownership and experience. The target variable is the defaulter flag. The XGBoost algorithm is a tree-based algorithm, so it does not require the numeric values to be scaled. For the encoder, we have two options. The one hot encoder will create a column for each value. As we saw in data analysis, the column city has many values which might lead to many columns. So I will go for ordinal encoder which will create a coding for each city in the same column. As there are many columns and each column can have many values, I will enter a high number for depth of the tree. Let me go with 50. I will make some other settings including the test size which I will keep as 30%. Now let me run the model training. In a while I will obtain the results. The accuracy for training dataset is 93%, and test dataset is 89%. The true positive indicates the credit loans which we are correctly predicting to be risky. So if we avoid lending credit, we will be saving money. There are also a few false negative, which means that machine learning has not identified them as risk, 
but in fact they are. So we will lose money on them. In addition, there are also some false positive, which means that machine learning has identified them as risk, but they are not. In these cases, we will lose interest rate by not giving the loan. Now let us see how we can translate the machine learning results into financial interpretation. Let me now select the data set which was output of the model training. I will select the field confusion matrix type as X. Let me select the loan amount as Y. Let me make some other settings and now run. The results show that there is 1.6 billion of loan amount as true negative. The machine learning model has identified 20 million credit as risk, so we can avoid giving the credit and thus gain 20 million. You also have 209 million as false negative which has not been identified as risk, but in fact they are. So, we will lose 209 million. You also have 10 million as false positive, for which we will lose interest by not giving the credit. If I consider 6% as interest rate, we will lose 0.6 million. Overall the loss is around 190 million, which 9% of total amount. So, we have reduced loss from 15% without machine learning to 9% with machine learning. This can translate into millions of saving for any financial institute. Generally, it is very difficult to completely avoid credit risk, but can be reduced using machine learning. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel, comment and like the video. See you soon in the next video.